tropical depressions, they kill without needing powerful winds. Their primary weapon isn't wind, but massive water. These systems become stationary rain-making machines over land. They can dump extraordinary rainfall amounts quickly. Some drop 12 inches in just hours. Imagine your entire monthly rainfall in one afternoon. Here's the scary part about depressions. You dismiss them as harmless weather patterns. Then flash floods turn streets into rivers. Emergency crews rescue families from rooftops. Meteorologists track these systems with growing concern. Every catastrophic hurricane started this exact same way, as a weak, numbered depression system. That harmless-looking swirl has organizational structure forming. Warm ocean water feeds it constant energy. Rotation patterns are already establishing themselves. You're witnessing a sleeping giant's first breath. Tropical storm. Wind speeds cross the critical 39 miles per hour threshold. The system officially earns its first name. No longer just a number on maps. Maybe forecasters call it Andrea or Barry. That name triggers serious tracking protocols immediately. Specialized aircraft begin flying dangerous reconnaissance missions. Hurricane hunters risk their lives measuring these storms. When professionals take those risks, civilians should worry. The disorganized thunderstorms are now forming patterns. Spiral bands wrap around a central core, like a cosmic pinwheel spinning in space. Each new thunderstorm band adds structural strength. The system builds its own protective armor layer by dangerous layer of organization. Before we explore nature's most destructive forces, subscribe now. Hit that notification bell for weather content. We're diving into atmospheric violence next. This knowledge could literally save your life. Don't miss what these storms become. Tropical Storm Allison proved names can be deceiving. It never reached hurricane status in 2001 but it completely paralyzed America's fourth largest city. The storm refused to move for days. It dumped over three feet of rain. That's like emptying swimming pools from the sky. Medical centers flooded to their second floors. Billion dollar research facilities were completely destroyed. Normally calm bayous became torrential death traps. Allison's final toll, 41 deaths, 15 billion damage all without hurricane strength winds ever developing. Wind speed isn't the only killer here. The Saffir Simpson scale measures only wind velocity, but storms carry multiple deadly weapons simultaneously. Category one, hurricane. Winds finally reach the magical 74 miles per hour mark. This number officially creates a hurricane designation. The atmosphere has crossed a critical threshold. These sustained winds equal weak tornado strength, but they cover hundreds of square miles and they blow relentlessly for many hours. Imagine highway speed winds hitting your house continuously for six, eight, or 12 straight hours. That's the reality of category one power. Wind becomes a systematic demolition tool here. Roof materials peel away like paper sheets. Large tree limbs crack like gunshots. Electrical infrastructure collapses like dominoes. Category one storms are notorious for deception. Hurricane Florence weakened before hitting North Carolina. Residents felt relieved about the downgrade. That relief proved tragically premature. Florence stopped moving and became a rainmaker. Historic flooding broke thousand year rainfall records. Entire communities vanished beneath rising waters. The weak hurricane killed 41 people. Property damage exceeded $15 billion again. Category one doesn't mean category safe. Satellite images now show the hurricane's eye, a circular void surrounded by spiraling clouds. This eye represents the storm's organizational power the hurricane has evolved beyond simple weather. It's become an atmospheric destruction machine. Category two, hurricane. Wind speeds jump to 96 to 110 miles per hour range. 
We've entered the freight train sound zone. Buildings begin failing in unexpected ways. The eye becomes perfectly circular and defined, like a giant's pupil staring down. Inside that eye, conditions are eerily calm, but the surrounding eye wall contains pure violence. These winds snap mature trees like twigs. They turn loose objects into flying missiles. We're talking about straw-piercing telephone poles. Physics becomes a weapon at these speeds. Category 2 creates sounds that haunt survivors, like standing beside a screaming jet engine. But the engine never stops running. The noise penetrates your skeleton for hours. Hurricane Ike demonstrated Category 2's hidden dangers. The storm's wind field was unusually massive. It generated Category 4 level storm surge. Waves reached 17 feet above normal levels. Believer Peninsula communities simply disappeared from maps. Not damaged, not flooded, but erased. Former neighborhoods became empty sand beaches. Category 3, Hurricane. Winds accelerate to 111 to 129 miles per hour speeds. Welcome to major hurricane classification officially. This isn't just meteorological terminology anymore. These storms stop being weather events. They become historical disasters reshaping entire regions. Communities measure time as before and after. The eye wall becomes a perfect destruction ring. Meso vortices form within the main circulation. These are tornadoes inside the hurricane. Wind speeds spike beyond official measurements. Hurricane Katrina struck as a Category 3. Hours earlier, it was Category 5 strength. Even weakened, Katrina overwhelmed New Orleans levees. Four-fifths of the city went underwater. Mississippi's coast experienced 28-foot storm surge. That's taller than most residential buildings. Storm surge becomes the primary killer. Category 3 storms permanently reshape natural landscapes. Century-old forests become fields of broken stumps. Storm surge reaches 9 to 12 feet heights. Dry land becomes temporary ocean floor. Geography itself changes during these events. Category 4, Hurricane. Winds reach 130 to 156 miles per hour sustained speeds. Physics laws become weapons of destruction. Common objects transform into deadly projectiles. Lumber pieces penetrate solid concrete walls completely. This is an exaggeration, but documented scientific fact. Wind energy exceeds most structural design limits. Hurricane Michael struck Florida with 160 miles per hour winds. Post-storm analysis upgraded it to Category 5. Mexico Beach was deleted from existence. City blocks became rubble and concrete slabs. The winds sandblasted buildings to bare concrete. Tree bark was stripped completely away. Inland pine forests snapped like matchsticks. Category 4 surge reaches 15 to 20 foot heights, but surge speed creates the terror. This isn't gradually rising water levels. It's a horizontal tsunami carrying everything. Category 5, Hurricane. Winds exceed 157 miles per hour with no limit. This represents Earth's atmospheric maximum power, nature's equivalent of nuclear weapons. These hurricanes exist at planetary atmospheric limits, perfect combinations of ocean heat and instability. Meteorological conditions align for maximum destruction. Only four have struck U.S. mainland. 1935 Labor Day hurricane was first. Camille hit in 1969 second. Andrew devastated Florida in 1992. Michael struck Panhandle in 2018. Each name carries earthquake-level historical significance. The 1935 storm hit with 185 miles per hour winds. Barometric pressure dropped to 892 millibars. That's the lowest U.S. measurement ever. The hurricane sandblasted the Florida Keys. Road pavement was stripped completely away. Hurricane Andrew's 165 mile per hour winds destroyed 25,000 homes. 
160,000 residents became instantly homeless overnight. Entire subdivisions became unrecognizable debris fields. Category 5 forces exceed human understanding completely. 150 miles per hour winds create 250 pounds pressure per square foot of surface area. Windows explode inward from pressure alone. Category 6, the future of hurricane classification. No official Category 6 exists currently. The Saffir-Simpson scale ends at 5. Destruction is theoretically complete at that level, but climate scientists debate scale expansion seriously. Rising ocean temperatures fuel stronger storms. Atmospheric conditions are becoming more extreme. Some storms already exceed theoretical limits. Hurricane Patricia reached 215 miles per hour in 2015. Hurricane Allen achieved 190 miles per hour in 1980. These speeds surpass current scale maximums. The debate has real world implications now. Future storms may exceed category five regularly. New classifications might become necessary soon to communicate unprecedented danger levels accurately. Imagine evacuating for another category five storm. People have heard that term before. They don't know this one's different. 50 miles per hour stronger than previous records. Scientists propose 180 miles per hour category six thresholds. Others want better surge predictions instead. Rather than focusing solely on winds, climate change pushes hurricanes beyond known limits. Warmer oceans provide more storm fuel. Rapid intensification becomes more common now. We may witness unprecedented super hurricanes soon current classification systems may prove inadequate. From depression to category five represents transformation. Loose clouds become geography altering forces of nature. Each level brings exponentially greater destruction. Hurricane unpredictability makes them truly terrifying. Category one storms can flood cities. Category five storms can weaken unexpectedly. Future storms may break all records. When you see tropical depressions forming, remember this. You're watching potential regional transformation beginning, not just simple weather pattern development. Subscribe for more extreme weather content. Knowledge saves lives when hurricanes strike.